Hello, world. I'm Azura Zainal, and thank you for joining us to this dynamic talk show host brought to you by Harry Award University, Malaysia. I'm super excited because today I've got two very special people joining us today. But before that, I have to say these are trying times indeed. University students have found a huge, huge part of their lives being disrupted with some being transported or sent back home by their universities, while some are stuck in a foreign country indefinitely. But of course, you know, despite the global um, uncertainties, students can actually, you know, they're really excited to know that they can actually pursue their studies. And even so, a lot of them are still very excited and look forward to going abroad to study as well. Now, while studying abroad or even just being able to continue one's higher education uh, smoothly might seem challenging in the wake of the pandemic. So it is very important for students to have a positive mindset. And how can they do this? Well, like I mentioned, two very special guests today that will be joining us. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Your Excellency Charles Hay, British High Commissioner to Malaysia. And of course, Professor Mushtaq Alatabi, Provost and CEO of Harriet Watt University, Malaysia. Welcome, both of you. How are you feeling today? Great, uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for, okay. the, um, for the introduction. <laughs> feeling good. <laughs> <laughs> Great, because feeling good is what we want. Now, before we head on, I just want to um, give you a little riddle. Let's see if you actually heard this before. Where do fish keep their money? Anybody? <laughs> <laughs> Take a guess. <laughs> in the river bank? <laughs> oh, well, credit to National Geographic, well, because that's where I got it from. Uh, it proves that both of you are very, very busy with work and with your everyday life. So thank you so much for taking the time to be here with me today to talk about having a positive mindset in their education um, as we go through this pandemic. Okay. So let's get on right with it with the first question. Now, um, Your Excellency, you know that UK typically has been a popular destination by Malaysians, not only for a holiday hotspot, but of course for education as well. You know, they love to go and study in the UK. How has this trend changed, and if any, in current times? Well, thank you. Yes, the UK and Malaysia have an incredibly strong relationship in the education sector. In fact, I had a a meeting yesterday with a politician in his 80s who studied in the UK and uh, the numbers have been very very strong for many many years um, and of course there are hundreds of different educational relationships and agreements and partnerships at school level at university level um, and we are very very privileged to have five UK universities with campuses here in Malaysia. Um, at the moment uh, the numbers are around about 17 to 19,000 Malaysians studying in the UK and we hope that that trend will continue and even rise because the UK wants more uh, overseas students. Wow, that is a lot and I do have a lot of friends who love going to the UK. I mean, despite that people say the UK or the London weather is not that great, but I know there are a lot of other places where UK is like the place to be. I know one of my friends keep wanting to go back to the UK. <laughs> so, uh, Your Excellency, maybe you could give us an overview of the COVID-19 situation in the UK itself presently and how it is affecting the higher education landscape. Hmm. Well, the UK, of course, like every other country, has been suffering from the COVID crisis. Uh, and we are now moving uh, into a recovery phase. So we've got now an extensive track and trace system in place. Um, as you've probably seen, the restrictions are easing, uh, social life is starting to begin again, and of course, uh, academic life is going to begin again as of September. Now, obviously, universities will be making their own decisions, and quite a lot of them are proposing to do the majority of their teaching online and virtually, at least for the first few months of next year. Uh, but we're hearing increasingly that universities are also planning to do face-to-face -face teaching. In fact, in a recent survey by uh, UK Education, nearly, uh, nearly all universities are proposing to do some teaching face-to-face. -face. And also, and I think this is very important, because of course going to university is not just about learning, it's also, also about the social environment. Um, they are planning also in-person social activities, obviously consistent with what's safe to do uh, during this time of COVID. 
Right, because as we know here, um, um, in Malaysia itself, COVID-19, the number has pretty much spiked up and we're very worried that, you know, the uh, infected cases have gone to double digits. And there are some people saying that, oh, we might get into lockdown uh, again, which is something that we do not want. I'm sure everybody around the world wouldn't want that to happen. So, Professor Musha, maybe you can tell us um, how Harriet Watt University in Malaysia are act is actually addressing this situation. Yes, we we have we have three strands in, in our approach to to this. So the first is academic and we came up with what we call responsive blended learning. It's it's clear that there is some uncertainty. We could we could plan for face to face, but maybe we'll have to close down. There are some students, international students specifically, who would like to come to Malaysia to study, but they are unable to come. So what we, what, we, what we did, we came up with this concept of responsive blended learning where the students could potentially do the whole thing face to face if, if we are open or uh, do it uh, online if we are unable to open or if they are unable to come to any one of our campuses in Malaysia, Dubai or Edinburgh uh, or do it in combination just in case something happens. So, this is something that we are very proud of, our academics throughout the world. And this is one of the beauty of, of the British education system, I believe. We, we have uh, these universities in Malaysia. We, uh, some universities have campuses in China and other places. So actually, we could pretty much cover the whole, uh, the whole lot. So this is from an academic point of view. And the objective is to always be there provide the students with the continuity so that they are able to progress and able to graduate on time because we really believe that they need to be there to lead the recovery. Our students, our graduates will be leading the recovery that's going to happen. The uh, second strand is to get to campus, to get the campus to be ready. So our campus now is, uh, 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 is being prepared with uh, physical distancing, uh, with uh, uh, sanitizer and, and everything to be ready for the students and staff to be safe when they are uh, back. The third thing which is very important and also related to the topic that we are talking about today is positive education. So keeping positive mindset, staying optimistic is extremely important. We have to work on it. Even we have to make it a choice. We have to uh, make being positive and happy a choice, even if it's the most difficult uh, thing to do. So uh, this positive education is something that we have been working on even before the uh, COVID-19, but now it's proving to be uh, extremely important uh, to keep the community of both uh, students, their parents, and also our academic staff and professional services staff to, uh, to remain positive and remain optimistic about uh, the future. So these are the three main things that we are doing. It is very, very uh, good, as you say, because it is very important to stay positive. But at the same time, it is very difficult because I believe not everybody can have a constant positive state of mind. So having a, uh, a support system and a university who is already doing this from the start is definitely something beneficial to the students who goes to Harriet Watt University indeed. So for your excellency, with the COVID-19 numbers still we can say relatively high in the UK, there are some families and students who are worried about their well-being. And of course, they're also looking at the possibility of having to postpone the education plans there. So what are the alternatives for students who do not wish to postpone their um, studies or education? Mm. Well, I think the first thing to say is that it's very important what Professor Mushtaq said about making sure that the environment is safe and universities have the obligation uh, and requirement to keep the, uh, the, the study place um, safe for students coming in uh, to study. Um, and of course, as you yourself said, there is always the risk of a second spike, of a further wave of COVID, and that's true in all countries. So I think every government has to be vigilant and ready to take the necessary steps uh, to prevent that. At the moment in the UK, as you know, uh, people coming into the UK, except for from a certain uh, group of countries, are required to go into two weeks of quarantine. And that will apply to uh, students from Malaysia going into the UK as things currently stand. Um, 
and will continue to be vigilant. But I think the UK government has shown that what they're trying to do is to have, if you like, maximum openness um, consistent with safety. And I should say a further thing for those who haven't picked it up yet, but there are some very encouraging early results in Oxford University who are are working on a vaccine. Uh, The first results are now out and it looks like they're quite promising. Of course, that doesn't mean we're going to have a vaccine in in a very short period to come. But hopefully, uh, well, I, I mean, I'm confident that at some point we will get back to life as usual. So I think there might be a bumpy period, which could be for months. We don't know. We need to be careful. We need to take precautions, keep people safe. But at some point, things will return to normality. Yes, it is. I mean, I- as much as we're seeing here in Malaysia, like I've mentioned earlier on, which I'm sure you know as well, people are starting becoming too a bit too relaxed with the whole idea of now that we are able to go out and do certain things and basically getting on with our lives, but you know, not being so serious about registering and writing their names down, hand sanitization and whatnot. It is definitely going to affect everybody as well. But Again, this is why we're here to talk about having a positive mindset and having that discipline, not just in our daily lives, but in studying and everything that you do. So this question is for Professor Mushtaq. Um, perhaps you could share what alternatives um, Harriet Watts University specifically offers for these students, the ones that do not want or do not wish to postpone their studying. I think... The great thing that uh, we offer is flexibility and peace of mind. So we we know that a number of UK bound and even other countries bound students are very worried, as you said, about going in September. And we tell them, Harriet Watt University and maybe our other uh, UK universities as well, we do have campuses here and you can start with us. Now, specifically for Harriet Watt that I can speak about, we provide, we provide full flexibility for the students. They could join us now and transfer in January if the situation improves or stay with us and transfer in um, uh, September next year when the, when the situation improves. So I think that flexibility that we provide through the, uh, the global uh, footprint that the university has is, is something that I, I think uh, has has came uh, to be a, a unique uh, feature of uh, of our university, and I encourage people to really consider uh, starting in Malaysia at the safety of their uh, homes, being stay close to family, while at the same time uh, looking forward to the time when it's really safe and they're comfortable to go to to the UK. So flexibility and peace of mind is very important at this moment in time. Can I, just, right. sorry, can, I just, can I just add on that point? It's a very important point. Um, the UK visa service is being very flexible at the moment because of COVID. So normally they would require a student to report to the uh, place of higher education on a particular date as part of the conditions for getting the visa. But they're showing much more flexibility now in terms of different start dates because universities are now staggering their start dates to take on smaller numbers of students. So I think we're going to see a lot more flexibility, and certainly in the UK system. Uh, I, I don't want to m- mention any names, but there are some countries that are not showing that flexibility, but that flexibility is there in the UK for people who want to start uh, online and then physically come to university a bit later on. Yes. And, and Azura, just to, to, just to add, I think we are also seeing that some students who were planning to go to other places uh, other than the UK, are now seriously considering changing their uh, study destination plans and choosing the UK because the UK uh, government and um, uh, I can speak also uh, for the uh, Scottish First Minister. She she herself came out and she said Scotland is welcoming international students. We would like you to come. You are an important part of our community, and I think this is really something that's so unique about the UK. They, they, the, the country doesn't see the relationship with, with, with international students as only they come to learn. The country see them as a source of diversity, a source of connectivity with the rest of the world. And I think this is really, really unique and, and re- truly beautiful. 
of course, with whatever that's going on around the world as well, having um, being accepted and having that acceptance is very important, as I would like to call it. We're one big happy family. So if we can feel like a family elsewhere in a different country, then that's great, you know. So I'm sure people will thrive if that kind of feeling, the acceptance is there for one to receive. Now, going into the uh, virtual studying, um, virtual studying abroad, as we all know, is fast catching up in this current climate. Um, and it has its fair share of proponents and detractors. What are your opinions on this trend? I'm sure, yes. Professor Mustak, you're very well versed in this line. So maybe I can start with you. Uh, yes, I, I think the... Uh one of the positive things that we, we got from COVID-19, it has really pushed us, all of us, to the limit uh, in terms of how do we work and how do we connect with each other and also how do we learn. So we, we have been talking about using technology for learning for, for decades, but we have, until now, we didn't have the opportunity to really switch everything to, to technology. So, so a few things have, have happened. We, we know now that people can work from home and they can be productive while working and learning from home. We also uh, have uh, uh, noticed that the technology pushed our academics to innovate. So you are no longer in one room with the students to make sure that everyone is paying attention. So we need to put extra effort to make the material uh, exciting and to focus really on the learning because previously you know attending a class in itself is sort of ticking the box for I have been to attended, the university or... but now I've attended yes but now it's all about really learning have you learned and uh, how do we make that exciting so for example we we actually started in April in in our foundation where we removed lectures entirely. There are no lectures whatsoever. There are, the students actually are uh, engaged with learning episodes where they go and acquire knowledge and then they exhibit. They show us how did they acquire, uh, acquire this knowledge. They do physics experiments at home in the same way that Isaac Newton did it a couple of hundred years ago and, uh, and deduce the, the same knowledge. We, we, we converted uh, an economics lecture into an interview just like this. So our, our lecturer interviewed the CEO of Standard Chartered, another British bank, and they spoke about exchange rate, for example. And the students had to watch the interview and then after that answer questions related to it. So it, it, it really pushed the, the, uh, the innovation to, to the next level. The other thing that we also realize, which is, I, I think is very important, that the university with, with campus is still needed. So the students still crave that social experience. And the, uh, while we are learning online now, people are telling us it's very important to study abroad and travel. So that global education is here to stay as well. So, so there are a few things that we've learned important to, to innovate, but also I think the investment that we are putting into having uh, great uh, places for students to learn is, uh, is worth its while because young people would like this to be the background over which for them to grow and socialize and be the best versions of themselves. That is very interesting, having to watch. I mean, like for some, you know how some people, um, they learn differently. You know, some can read books for hours and they can absorb so much information, while some are more audio and more um, visual kind of learning, pretty much like me. So having to watch someone being interviewed and learn at the same time, that's great innovation and I love that. So if there's ever an opportunity for me to be part of it, you know where to call me. <laughs> so coming back to your Thank excellence, you. perhaps you can uh, share with us about your thoughts about virtual study and what are your opinions on this trend as well? Yeah, well, Professor Mushtaq has really said it all with respect to studying. I mean, I think there are lots of interesting parallels also between the working from home, uh, which we're all doing and have been doing since the beginning of the COVID crisis. And indeed, with the schooling that I, my kids are, uh, are still at school, they're 14 and 11, and they've been studying online as well. And 
in all these areas, we've seen some fantastic innovations. I think we're all getting used to doing things in a way that we would never have imagined um, months ago. And there are some fantastic positives. But what we're also, I think, identifying is some of the fantastic positives of actually being in the same room with other people as well. And I think, to, as a Mushtaq's point, you can, you can do the learning um, and you can do the meeting, but what you don't get is the, the sidebar conversations over a coffee. Um, and if you think about the university uh, experience, a lot of the UK universities have wonderful facilities for sports and, um, uh, and socialising, and students want to do that as well. I mean, otherwise, uh, but you miss out on, on a big chunk of the university experience. So I think it's great that our universities have recognised them, and they're trying to recreate as much of that as they can and in a safe way, uh, and they're working towards being able to do as much give that full student experience. And Professor Mushtaq rightly talked about the, the way that they welcome services as a source of diversity. We miss out on a lot of that if it's all virtual and online. So we need to bring people together in different ways to get the full benefit. So coming back to you, you said you have two children uh, doing studying online. How are you coping with that? Is that something that you have to watch over them to do it? Or you have to say, oh, <laughs> it's time for you to do your own work. It's time for you to listen to that. Or they're pretty much disciplined into getting their own work done. They are, I'm very lucky. They're very diligent. They're very disciplined. But um, I was smiling when Professor Mushtar talked about that, ex that experiment which people are doing themselves. You know, I'm now doing science experiments with my kids at home, which actually is great <laughs> for me as well, because I'm, I'm now remembering a lot of the things that I learned, which I've completely right. forgotten about. <laughs> <laughs> I totally agree. When I see my nieces and nephews doing the same thing, I say, oh, oh, and then I can become a teacher to them as well, you know, trying to teach them, oh, this is what I learned back then, and you're doing it differently pretty much. So, yeah. That, that's very, very cool. So, uh, Your Excellency and Professor Musha, we're going to take a short break, but of course, to all our viewers, you know, remember that at Harriet Watt University, it's all about flexibility, you know, and they will make sure that in the end, they will hold your hand from day one all the way until you graduate to making sure that you have the best education um, in campus, in school, and of course, afterwards as well. So, we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we're going to talk further about having a positive mindset. Be right back. Welcome back, everybody. This is Azura, and this is What's Up World with our two very special guests. Uh, we have Professor Mustak Al Atabi, who is the Provost and CEO of Harriet Watt University, Malaysia, and of course, Your Excellency Charles Hay, British High Commissioner to Malaysia. And we are talking about staying positive and pursuing your higher education journey. We've had quite an interesting conversation just before we took a break where we uh, find out that at Harriet Watt University, it's all about having the flexibility for the students to be able to have whatever it takes for them to graduate um, here at Harriet Watt University, not just in Malaysia, but everywhere else as well. So my next question, moving on to your excellency, what are the UK's plans in terms of reopening campuses? I mean, what reassurances can you give to Malaysian students looking forward to heading over to the UK to further their studies? Well, the first thing to stress is that the UK government is uh, sending out messages of welcome to our overseas students. And uh, a few weeks ago, the, the, the education ministers from the four UK nations sent a joint letter to all overseas students in the UK, stressing the support that they would get from the UK government and from the university or place of higher education that they were applying to or studying at. And that letter can be found online. So I think the things to stress are that the universities are taking all the steps that they, that they need to take to make sure that there's a safe environment for students to come into. Um, what we're going to see, I think, is a progressive opening of campuses over the first uh, term of the year. And as we were discussing earlier, a blend of virtual online learning and face-to-face, -face, but with increasing amounts of face-to-face -face, uh, education as the term goes by. And I think that's, that kind of flexible should give 
um, compliments I think, to students and to families of students who are thinking about coming to the UK to study. Now, why is it so important for students and their families to actually have a positive mindset, to stay positive during these trying times, Professor Mishtaq? Well, to have a positive mindset is actually always important. There are, there are links between um, staying positive and better health, better uh, academic achievement, more success uh, in life in, in general. But when, when, when the, uh, there is a stressful time and uh, we are asked to make decisions and uh, under pressure, then we will need that mental resilience even more. And having a positive mindset is uh, something that will allow us to think a little bit more long term rather than reacting to the situation that we are uh, at now in, in, in the moment. So it's, uh, it's, it's really about also having an understanding what, what is our purpose and what, what impact do, do we want to have on the world and how is this situation that we are in is in a way an opportunity, is in a way uh, for, for us to find the best uh, into us to show more innovativeness and compassion. So it is really important to, to stay uh, positive. Uh, and, and not to mention that it's actually better to be happy rather than to be, um, you know, otherwise. That is true. So Your Excellency, how do you keep yourself positive at all times? You know, having um, a working environment that's pretty much stressful and having to um, talk to people and of course keeping your um, staff all in check, including your family. So how do you keep a positive mindset? Mm. Well, firstly, I mean, just coming back to the question about people who are going to study in the UK. I had a meeting this morning with someone whose daughter is going to go and study in the UK. She's never lived in the UK before. Um, and she's uh, worried about it, of course, because this is a time of great uncertainty. And I think the thing um, perhaps to bear in mind is that this, this time will pass. We will come through this COVID crisis at some point, either through a vaccine uh, or through managing, controlling the virus in other ways. And when we're talking about people going to university, we're talking about them laying down the foundations for their, their entire life. Uh, so I think trying to take a sort of long view of this is really, really important. It is um, a short term issue. And of course, a lot of people are suffering, they're uh, economically suffering financially at this time. And even those who are fortunate enough to stay in work uh, are finding it complicated and much more difficult and much more stressful. Um, but I think there's a lot of pleasure that can be taken out of the smaller things in life. I talked earlier on about my kids. I'm spending a lot more time with them than I ever have done up to now, and that's a wonderful thing. Um, I find that we're doing a lot of small things together. Um, so, you know, there's, there's always, if you, if you maintain a positive attitude and try to, try to find positives in whatever's going on around you, 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 you can, I think. So um, with a lot of people out there with the pandemic going on, COVID-19, again, not knowing when it is exactly going to end, we just have to keep ourselves disciplined and making sure that we do not um, lose track or even forget to do little things in lives as well. So with so many to, to want to study abroad, and I, we know that a lot of their plans have been somewhat derailed, what advice can you give them to stay positive at all times, um, Professor Mushtaq. Well, you know, understanding why do they want to study abroad and what change and impact do they want to have on the world is a very important thing because it's very important for us to know the why in our life. And, and this is a highly motivating thing when the research has shown even people who have been through the Holocaust, if they can remember a, a, a positive reason for them to stay alive, they could stay alive and they stay positive and stay motivated. So it's very important to remember why, the why, and to work towards achieving that in, in any um, way that is uh, possible. An engineer 
uh, might think of this as you know getting a degree in engineering but uh, a better way of thinking about it is to make the environment uh, you know uh, cleaner uh, through uh, progressing clean energy for example this is a more um, a, a deeper way of, of, of looking at it uh, the, there are also very simple exercises you know when it comes to uh, understanding how our brain and mind work so breathing in slowly actually helps you stay positive connecting with 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 your friends and your family texting them listening to them actually will help us you know be uh, more positive and and help us to to take that long view that uh, uh, his excellency spoke about so i think it's it's really at the end of the day how can we see this not only as the challenge that it is but also as the opportunity to build our resilience to come closer as a community and to work together, show compassion and innovation. I like how you say you have to remember your why, because I know there are a lot of people out there probably are not aware of their why as well. But, you know, sometimes it doesn't just come just like that to understand or to know what your why is. But I guess it's okay for you to take your time to know what your why is. So that's why you need to keep talking to people, keep talking to communicate and connect with your family and friends to eventually know what your why is. So Your Excellency, perhaps you would like to add on to some advice that would you like to give to our viewers who are watching right now? Well, I think the point about purpose is a really important one. In fact, it may be the most important one of all. And maybe that makes it you know, more complicated when you're at the stage of being a student, because certainly I remember when I was a student, I didn't really know what my, my why was, if you want to put it that way. It's a, it's a time of developing that. Um, and I think so, so that, you know, is something to, again, for people to try to uh, maintain an awareness of as they're studying. And the other important point I think that came out of, of those comments was the, the point about family and friends and about networks. And I think consistently studies have shown that people who enjoy good mental health, they, they also have good networks of friends and family which they maintain. And of course, when you go to study, you're building your first, if you like, adult network as a student. And I certainly, you know, I'm certainly st still closely in touch with a lot of people I was at university with, and I think that's true for most people. So again, it's another very, very important reason for continuing to go down that route of study, uh, even though it may feel difficult and challenging at the moment, the rewards will be great at the end of it. That's true. So, Your Excellency and Professor Mushtaq, of course, thank you so much for being here with us today. I know out of your busy schedule and having time to actually give us some motivation as well, because as we're talking about keeping positive, and for those of you who are watching right now, I believe uh, you don't have to worry about anything if you're studying at the Harry Watt University, because you know it's all about again the flexibility that you can have when you're studying there as uh, mentioned by professor mushta that you know as they are always there to make sure that you graduate no matter what with the rbl the response of blended learning there are ongoing right now you can decide whatever it is that you want you can go online fully or you want to have a face-to-face -face, or even you want to have a combination of both so there's nothing to worry about of course studying abroad as well as your excellency has mentioned earlier on as well there's nothing to be um uh, worried because acceptance is there and they would like for you to come and all the uh uh, steps are taken to make sure that your safety is number is number one and it's key as well. And of course, to top things off as we end this is to again find your purpose and know your why and keep connecting with people, uh, with your friends and your family in order for you to have a positive mindset. Because as we all know, when we have a positive mindset, we're happy, we can do so much more, we can innovate and we can become a better version of ourselves. But of course, if that doesn't work too, we can always sing, don't worry, be happy. Come on, sing, there's a little song I wrote. <laughs> Well, once again, Your Excellency and Professor Mushak, thank you so much for your time. And I hope we're able to do this more often and maybe chat again, like what you said, innovating the way of learning, where, you know, doing through interviews. I hope both of you have a wonderful day. 
And um, yeah, have a great day. Stay safe, everybody. Stay tuned for our next episode as it's going to be quite fun as we had today. Thank you and have a great day, everybody. Thank you, Yang Thank you. Thank for you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you very much, indeed. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.